Hi YouTube, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. This is Jacob Graham for Unix Soldier. And today we're going to talk to you guys about how to choose an antivirus. What to look at, what are some things to consider for yourself, and what are some common misconceptions. So my name is Jacob Graham and I'll be doing this video guys for you guys. And uh, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is what you get when you pay for an antivirus versus not paying. So first of all, I never pay for antivirus. Um, I mean, if I had a huge company and they had seed after seed after seed, I'd probably pay for something. But that's because a lot of paid software comes with a nice administration panel that I can administer antivirus and scan remotely. So the things I want to talk to you guys about would have to do with what you get when you pay. So usually when you pay for an antivirus, let's take Nod32 for instance. They have a free scanner, but if you pay for it, it comes with a firewall, it comes with a bunch of other stuff. Now, a lot of people like Nod32, and I don't, because people like Nod32 because they go by what other people tell them. I never do that. I always test everything, and I have, like, a huge virus wall. And when I test things, I find that a lot of the best antiviruses that people say are best are not the best. Uh, Nod32 looked really great. It had a lot of features, even won awards. But one of the key things that Nod32 could not do ESET Nod32 is it could not find viruses on external drives. Maybe it can now, but at the time it couldn't. And the, the guy who was an expert with ESET, he told me really rudely in a forum, he told me that I was an idiot because you needed to have it installed on the drive in order for it to scan that drive. But we were talking about external, so he was just backwards. Like, why would you install it on your external? It just doesn't make sense. So th that's often why I think paying for antivirus is not worth it. Usually all you get is a recovery feature. In the case of antivirus for a phone, you get some other cool features like, um, uh, you know, theft protection, uh, GPS lock, uh, wipe your phone, stuff like that. And you get those same kind of features when you pay with an antivirus for a PC. But the thing is, you don't really need all those features. Like, you know, the Windows firewall pretty much does it, its job. Because your hardware firewall, which is your router, usually does a better job anyway. So you don't really need a software firewall. Um, a lot of the times I even disable them, but if you are going to use one, you don't want it, you probably don't want to use the Windows one. So that being said, you can go get a free firewall from Komodo or um, there's that other company, they make uh, checkpoint routers. I can't remember their free firewall. It's, it's the most common one. Zone Alert or yeah, anyway, Zone Alert or something like that. That's the other big one. Um, so that's that's the one thing. It's like I think when you get you pay for an antivirus, you get a lot of things that you don't normally need, like internet security. Um, internet security or not internet security. Um, yeah, like with the internet security packages, you usually get something for like a web reporter. So. I use something called MyWatt. You guys, or uh, it's called Watt Web of Trust, and th the website is mywatt.com. That's M-I-W-O-T.com, and that's an add-on that runs in Firefox, runs in uh, Chrome, it runs in Internet Explorer, it runs in Opera. And what it does is it gives you a rating on a site inside Google, and when you actually go to the site, and tells you about the site. So when you click on it, it'll warn you if the site has a bad rating, and it'll tell you why. Because you can get a virus just by going to a site. Because a lot of people don't realize. This is big. If you don't realize this, you, you really should understand this. Um, <laughs> you, you might, I get a lot of people when I used to repair computers and viruses that used to come to me and say, how come my antivirus didn't pick that up? Or how come I got a virus I didn't download anything? Well, you can get a virus just by going to a web page. You don't have to download anything. Because when you go to a web page, you are downloading that whole web page to your computer locally. And so it gets saved in RAM and, you know, a bunch of bad things can happen there. That's why having a web reporter like MyWatt is so important. I find a lot of the ones that come with antivirus, such as Avast, Avast is great, but their web reporter sucks. It doesn't have very many websites indexed, which means it doesn't have much info on many sites. So I find MyWatt is a good alternative. And then it's not part of your antivirus. It's its own thing, and it's really light in your browser. So that's about the only advantages of paying for antivirus. Now, let's talk about 
the different types of antivirus. The most common type of antivirus is the worst kind, and that's called signature-based. So signature-based kind of works like a blacklist at a party. So if you're not on, if you're on the list, it kind of works differently. In a party, if you're on the list, you get into the party. With antivirus, if you're on this blacklist, they don't let you into the party because it's not a whitelist, it's a blacklist. So basically, any file can come into your computer if it's not known about by the antivirus, which creates a huge, you know, hole in our security scheme for using legacy antivirus that uses signature-based detection. So when you have signature-based, like I said, like it's kind of like standing at your door and having a blacklist of the FBI and letting everybody into your house as long as they're not on this blacklist from the FBI. It's completely insane. And that's what people say to me all the time. How come my antivirus didn't detect, didn't detect this virus? I mean, I, we bought this antivirus from you, and that's why I stopped selling antivirus, because I got tired of hearing that. You know, we bought this $80 antivirus. How come we have a virus? Well, because there's many reasons, but the biggest reason is because most antiviruses use this crappy thing called signature-based. I mean, even intrusion detection systems and intrusion protection systems that use signature base suck. <laughs> you know, and signature base is just bad. And so, um, a lot of antivirus don't just use signature base, but a lot of them do. And that, that's where you get into zero day exploits. Zero day is the idea that a piece of malware hasn't been detected yet, or there's a vulnerability, let's say, in Java that allows someone to have, you know, remote access into a computer and nobody's gotten around to fixing it yet. That's a zero day. And that's why it gets really dangerous. Now, besides signature-based, antivirus also use things like heuristics. Heuristics is one of my favorites. Um, heuristics refers to experience-based techniques for problem solving and learning and discovery that give solution, which is not guaranteed to be optimal, but at least in other words, it learns from patterns that your computer does and learns what is normal. <clears throat> and then we get into, like, anomaly-based is also um, part of behavior-based malware. And so these are different types of, of finding um, malware and stuff like that. Signature-based is the worst. And the reason it's the worst is because, like I said, it's... It's like letting anybody into your house that's not on the FBI's wanted list. So if something's brand new, and of course there's 36,000 viruses for Windows daily. That's why I run Linux. Um, that's why a lot of people run Mac, but I hate Mac. I, you know, I get the same thing out of a Mac system running a Linux system. But that's one of the main misconceptions. So what do I like for antivirus? Well, I always switch because oh, before we get into what I like for antivirus, I just want to explain one more thing. The rootkit, the most brutal piece of software ever invented. And rootkit comes from the term root. So it was originally done on Linux and Nix systems, Unix and Linux. And a rootkit is a virus that gains administrator access of the kernel or of the computer. And so when that happens, they can create something called hooked function calls, which, in other words, um, when the kernel gives out an instruction set or gives out some instructions, it can't tell whether it came from itself or it came from the malware. And at that point, you can't detect it with any tool, except for special tools that look for rootkits, and even those can't always find them. Um, rootkits are really nasty. Um, there's special tools just to, just to try to find them on your computer. And that's why I don't use Windows anymore except for gaming and a few other things. I mostly use Arch Linux, but I digress on that topic. Malware is scary, and you know, I really understand it. And so at the end of the day, I'm always switching back because between antiviruses, because sometimes I just want to scan my computer with another tool. When I get a computer from somebody and it's infected, I scan it with three, four, five tools. And if your computer guy doesn't do that, he's not doing a good job. Because I always find something on that last tool in the last couple minutes of the scan, whether it's just adware or it's something really bad like a you know a Trojan or a rootkit, that makes a huge difference. So I really highly suggest you guys look into antivirus. Avast is good. Um, Kaspersky is pretty good. Uh, I really like the user interface of Kaspersky, but it's definitely not top of the line like everyone says. 
Um, Bit Defender is okay, but it's very sensitive. Um, I hate Norton and Semantic Endpoint Protection and all those products. Really hate Norton. Really hate Semantic. Um, AVG is okay. They're not bad. Um, Malwarebytes Pro is probably my favorite because it's thirty dollars for a lifetime, and it's what I've been using for years. Um, and uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is you should never run two antiviruses at the same time. Most people know that. That's textbook 101, being a computer guy. But the thing that people don't know is things like Malwarebytes is not an antivirus. It's an AM, anti-malware. And it's meant to complement an antivirus. So a lot of the times people will say, my techie guy uninstalled Malwarebytes because he said he shouldn't have two antiviruses. And I get so offended because it's not. Malwarebytes is literally meant to complement another antivirus. It's not supposed to be the DA end all solution and it's not an antivirus it's an AM while it does take out some viruses it focuses on malware and the same thing for antivirus like a vast or, or not even or anything they focus on viruses but they also take care of malware and you know anything that falls under the term grayware so I hope you liked my video um, please subscribe like the video and comment for more okay thanks have a good one